What's up, y'all? I just want to jump on here real quick before you get into the first impressions video of the Fujifilm X-H2S. Very exciting camera, by the way. Now, some of you probably already seen this video and you're probably wondering why we're re-uploading it, but here's the rundown. I personally spoke with Fujifilm and the early production unit that I had in my hand when I reviewed this camera, uh, it didn't have the latest firmware update. So some of the issues that I had mentioned or talked about, uh, Fujifilm has already addressed, as well as the autofocus. Now, we'll be doing a full in-depth review of the Fujifilm X-H2S. I am super excited. Once I finally get the final unit in my hands, we're gonna go all in. So that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. I don't say cheers, okay. Enjoy. Bye. Here it is, the Fujifilm X-H2S. 6.2K open gate, internal ProRes, 4K 60, 4K 120, unlimited recording. Yeah, it's a lot. But here are my first impressions. Now, this is only the pre-production model, so I assume that about time this is starts shipping in July, that some of the things I might mention will be hopefully updated by then. So just keep that in mind as we go through this impression. Again, it's not a review, but I'm super excited. I'm actually out here in Valley Forge getting some footage using the 18 to 120 lens. Um, it's pretty cool. I'm still gonna get used to that power zoom. I've never really used power zoom, especially on mirrorless cameras like this. Yeah, that's where I am right now. So a few notable welcomes to the X-H2 in terms of the design and the body. One is the HDMI. We've been asking politely for HDMI, full HDMI, and they finally put it in their flagship camera here. Now, another thing to note, um, of course you have USB-C, you have your microphone jack and headphone jack, all separate, all full size, so you don't need adapters and dongles. It's huge. Um, the grip itself, it's amazing. I really like the handling of it. Um, have more control, it's a little bit deeper. I do have large hands, so like getting my hand around here pretty nicely, so I can kind of just comfortably hold this. So you have your dedicated record button at the top here near your on and off switch, or you can actually program um, either one to, to hit record. Your ISO, white balance, and then a custom button here as well. I've been using the X-T4 for a while, so I'm used to having the joystick um, at you know this position here. So I had to kind of retrain my brain to reach up a little bit further to grab the joystick. Now, luckily my thumb is long enough, big hands. That allows me to kind of reach up there. So I had to just you know train myself again. I know a lot of people might see that as an issue, but you'll get used to it, right? I gotta put a profile on this. Okay, this is gonna be the running test to see how the IBIS handles. Again, I have the 10 to 24 on. I have the optical stabilization on as well and the in-body stabilization on the camera. So let me be honest. Most of us know that one of the things you could not do with the X-T4 or any other Fuji camera was use IBIS and walk with a wide angle lens. You would get this weird wobbling edges. And so even though I can't see what's happening now as I walk around this basketball court, uh, maybe they improved it, right? Okay, we wanna run, 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 run. I look like an idiot. Let's put some music on. I'm gonna run towards camera. How was that? How'd it look? So let's just do some simple push-ins, push-outs. And uh, yeah. All right, so moving on to the pros. The first one that comes to mind is the 6.2K open gate. Now, a lot of you are asking me on Twitter, what's the point of 3-2 aspect ratio? How can you use it? Why this aspect ratio? And those are valid questions. If you're not used to using something like that, then it just makes it kind of weird and awkward when you're using different lenses and stuff. So let me just talk about one particular use case for open gate in the 3-2 aspect ratio. 
Now, when we say open gate, it just simply means a full sensor readout. It doesn't mean it's full frame. It just means that you're using the entirety of a sensor. You're not using any crop like a 16 by 9 crop or a 17 by 9 crop. This is the full height and width of the sensor that's in the camera. It could be full frame or it can be super 35. It just means full sensor readout. I keep hitting my mic. This is particularly useful for anamorphic filmmaking. Now I hope there's gonna be more anamorphic tools built into the camera once this camera is released, but the three to aspect ratio allows you to de-squeeze properly to get the exact aspect ratio you need when using anamorphic lenses. Whew, that was a mouthful. But basically you can use lenses like a 2X anamorphic lens, a 1.8 anamorphic lens, and a 1.5 anamorphic lens. This allows you to get proper uh, de-squeeze aspect ratios without cropping. And this will achieve a final aspect ratio that's in the anamorphic or widescreen format or cinescope format. That's all that means. If that went over your head, I am so sorry, but yeah, just uh, stay with me. Okay, moving quickly. ProRes, yes, I'll take it. Fantastic. Much easier workflow from card to computer to editing. Easy. You don't have to worry about transcoding. You're good. External recording, that is very interesting. So I'm going to have to get myself a Blackmagic recorder or at least rent it out so I can definitely just check out how it looks, how does it compare to my 6K Pro, what are the files looking like, all that jazz. I think that's very exciting. The fact that too, you can use ProRes RAW out of this camera. So you have two options. You can go either way with those types of RAW formats. Always a plus. Unlimited recording. Finally, I'm always stuck to 30 minutes on the X-T4. Now I have no worry. And then lastly, F-Log. I didn't spend too much time with F-Log. I want to do more. Um, I'm very excited that it has increased dynamic range, but again, I haven't really found a sweet spot. I haven't had enough time. So that being said, F-Log 2 is very exciting and it is a pro because more dynamic range is better, um, but just need more time with it. So now just to add a few more things to this list of cons, one, I would have to say, I would love to see a waveform monitor or some more exposure tools that can be useful for when filmmaking. Similar to how Panasonic has multiple tools in their cameras with the GH5, the S1, the S1H. So yeah, I would love to see a little bit more filmmaking tools in this camera moving forward. So even though there's no shutter angle in this camera, I'm used to having 1 48th of a second from the X-T4, but weird enough, this only stops at 1 50th of a second in the X-H2S. It's not a huge deal, but it's something I just noticed and I would prefer to have 1 48th. And lastly, there was this weird blur that I was getting. I don't know how I was doing it, but I was filming on the 18 to 120. And sometimes it just wouldn't, wouldn't focus at all. And it would just be this weird smearing look. I hope that's just, again, a bug that they can correct later on. So I'm just going to just point it out and move on from that. So weird enough, the X-H2S still does that weird exposure change. I'm at F4, nothing's changing, but when you zoom in out, and in on Fuji lenses, the exposure just changes on screen. I wonder if that's doing that in camera too. That's kind of annoying. It does it on every Fuji I've ever used. What is going on with that? Okay, so overall my thoughts are this. This is a good step for Fuji to make. I, I've always wanted them to be more serious about their filmmaking because I think they have a unique sensor. Um, the F-Log system as well as the X-mount lens system too. They can make fantastic lenses. But outside of that, this is a better step um, in a lot of ways. Internal ProRes, a lot of cameras at this price point don't have that feature other than the Blackmagic and now the GH6. So that's a good thing. Now, some of you might say full frame versus Super 35. You know, it really doesn't matter. Full frame has its place, full frame has its look, and I love full frame. But Super 35 still reigns king in a lot of different areas um, when it comes to filmmaking. And it has a lot of pros too. So. The sensor size really doesn't matter. It only depends on what you're trying to film and what you're trying to create visually. Now, I know I didn't touch on photography at all because it's a fantastic photo camera as well. So that being said, this is a nice hybrid camera packaged into a small system that can be something really great if Fuji does hear us when we talk about some of these things um, that we want to see improve because we want to make this camera really great. And I know Fuji wants to make this camera great too. So tell me, what do you think about the X-H2S? Are you going to pick it up? I know I am. I actually, I actually already made my pre-order. So once it finally comes, I will be doing a lot more tests, rigging it up in different ways. So if you're interested in that, head over to Cine Daily to see more content around that. That's going to be pretty much the, the channel where you're going to find the most information about the X-H2S moving forward. That's what I'm pledging to do. <laughs> 
Um, but outside of that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what you think. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. See you.